Hello, good afternoon and welcome to another week in our garden. It's a sort of sunny, cloudy sort of day. We keep getting the, the window sun and then we cloud over. Now the wind direction is from the bypass so you might hear a bit of traffic and that's an aeroplane going across us as well. So we'll let the aeroplane go and then we'll talk to that's better, it's flown over now. Now this week, I told you we're going to have a walk up the garden and show you what we've planted and what we've been up to this spring. So we're going to start from the very bottom against the rhubarb and then work our way up the garden to the shed and where the grapevine is and show you all up there. Now this is the sweet corn, we're right down the bottom a little bit windy today down here but normally it's a lovely sunny spot so I pop the sweet corn in now the four large ones at the back are the four that escaped the cold wind last time the rest are all a reset beyond that there's a few of the leeks that we had left over I didn't want to waste them so I put them in that little stretch there this is the rhubarb, it's picking up very very well now, we've had a drop of rain and it really is growing well. We'll take another crop off it, middle of next month I think now. Now these are the pumpkins that are planted, that's the farmer's gas guns. Uh, these are the pumpkins that we planted, I've planted nine, they're all the same variety. As you can see there's a little bit of wind burn on them but they were hardened up but they, because we're so exposed we get a little bit more wind now normally I grow the pumpkins in circles but because these this year are all the same variety I'm going to grow them in one big circle it'll make watering easier and finding the pumpkins easier as well it won't be one big mass especially when you're watering to fight your way through so there'll be a line of bottles just to pour the water in now i have set the squashes down the sides of the arch there's quite a few of them and there's one at each end what we call a spare just in case now some are the spaghetti squash some are normal winter squash some are hunter squash and some are the trombone squash what the granddaughter sent and that would be interesting to see what happens with those they're all establishing nicely I will put bottles between for watering to make life easier for me and they seem to be settling down very well they seem to be settling better actually than the pumpkins are now the courgettes I planted down the bottom here I've actually planted four two yellow and two green that will be plenty for what we want they're settling down nicely now the yellow ones were reset because the mice at them so they're a little bit behind but they'll soon catch up spare peppers we had from the greenhouse I brought down here to the bottom where it's nice and sunny or normally nice and sunny so they'll be fine they're picking up lovely and the winds had no effect on them at all then. now we're at the frame where we put the sweet peas I've put a, a soft net on the top although it is wire it is very soft so I've put that over the top and they're just latching on now and then there'll be a way coming up again they're doing rather well I've took the bird protection off they seem to be leaving them alone at the moment let's hope it stays that way they are just becoming into flower now so we'll have some early flowers and then some hopefully when they get a bit taller now around the garden this year I've spot planted quite a few flowers just here we've got some sunflowers they won't make much more hype than what they're doing at the moment but they'll just pretty this up and if they do get seed heads on then we'll leave them for the birds or give them to the chickens the apple tree is fruiting up nicely now we might get a little bit of June drop towards the end of the month but we've got quite a few apples on 
the leaves are looking well I can't see any aphid or anything on the back we have kept the grease bands well greased this year but I've noticed there's been a lot of ants growing up them with aphid in the mound so they're trying to get the aphid up there but I think fingers crossed that we stop them now down here on plot D still this is where we put the outdoor tomatoes these really have suffered in the wind but they have started to pick up a little bit now as it gets a little warmer they'll soon be away and they'll be fine the garlic is beginning to die back a little now so that'll be out of the way soon and then the tomatoes will take over I have been busy putting the mulch on as you can see over there but at the moment I'm busier elsewhere in the garden and I just can't get to finish it and we've got some rain coming the next few days so when it's had another good drench I'll try and get some more on the tomatoes on this side of the plot are doing a little bit better they've got a little bit more protection from the wind the other thing to notice is that all the front row I've put the plum type tomatoes then they'll not need they're more of a bush so they'll not need a, a bigger cane than this the back ones are a little bit taller we'll take them up to four or five trusses and that's it we'll stop them at that we're at the first of the frames now unfortunately this frame has been run through by the moles and they've really really pushed these plants out the ground i've tried to put them back in best i can I did push the parsnips back in, I don't know whether they'll take or not. They seem to be standing alright, whether they'll put on a root or not, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Now, between the two frames, we've got what we like to call the salad box. So, as you can see, I've got a few radish in there, a few red lettuce, and a few green lettuce, and also a few beetroot that was left over so I put them in there to bring them on a bit quicker and providing we don't get any moles coming in there destroying it they should do quite well now in the second frame if you remember we planted the first early potatoes these are rocket they're flowering now got lovely flowers on them and I think it's time to lift the boil in to see how we're going to get on with them what we'll do is just take a row and see what we get out of them okay if they're not quite ready in the small we'll eat them but then we don't want them too big because they are supposedly new potatoes now they're in mainly compost in these frames so I shall lift them by hand okay so let's have a look what we got we've got one or two hopefully we can get a boiling out of it or not <laughs> these might not be showing now yeah Enough for tea. Right, we'll take another one, see what we can get out of this one. And see what we can get. But they're, they're not quite ready yet, but there's enough there for tea, so I'm quite happy with that. 
Now the potato plot is looking very well. They've all been fertilised now. One or two flowering. And they just need some, some rain now and some sunshine. Now the first two rows on this plot are the same as what's in the frame. What I should do, I should let them finish flowering. Give them some a good watering if it stays as dry as this and then we'll start lifting them maybe in give them another week they'll be ready now we're on the tunnels now now in this first tunnel as you can see there are two huge roseanne type lettuce coming through now about another week or so they'll be really hearted up beyond that there are some little gems and at this end of the tunnel is planted summer cabbage and at the far end there's a few spring onion between cauliflower which are all year round which are not going as well as I'd like them to. Now the second tunnel we have one end planted up with late summer cabbage they're the Sherwood they'll make lovely cabbages they will along the centre if you can just see them was a few kohlrabi that I do believe didn't get the frost so I put them in and they're about as big as golf balls now so they won't be long at this end we have believe it or not red cabbage it looks green at the moment but I can show you it will turn red in the next tunnel at this end we have calibrese as you can see they've just started to flower up now so we will have some midsummer calibrese they're very tasty planted with the calibrese are some little gems that we will be harvesting some of those in a few moments but we'll come to those when we plant them uh, when we harvest them at the far end there's greyhound cabbage they won't be long now they heart up very quickly and that odd roseanne lettuce that's got itself in the wrong bed. Now in this tunnel, apart from the weeds that weren't taken out, I haven't weeded this one yet, there is savoys and at the far end some turnip for the salads. These will be ready very late summer or early autumn. Now in this tunnel at the far end we have green and red celery and at this end we have celeriac. Doing rather well, very dry but they're doing alright. Now in this tunnel at this end if you can remember we planted the leeks and then in the centre of that there is Kohlrabi, they're the second set because we lost the first set in the frost and at the far end there's just a little bit of celeriac that we had left over so I just pushed that in the end. Now this tunnel if you remember is a little bit taller than the others and it's a double tunnel. Now the main plants in here are the Brussels sprouts and along that side there it's interplanted with the romaine lettuce which are nearly ready also planted in here there's a few onions over the far side and some radish which are ready now which we will harvest in a few moments now we're on plot A and this is the beetroot the two of the bigger rows there of what the girls sent of all the different coloured beetroot and then the far row and these two rows here are the bolt hardy which are planted in groups. Beetroot seem to be doing very well this year. These are a few of this season's onions we planted. These are called rumba, but we didn't have room on the other plot for them, so I pushed them in just there between the beans and what would be the beetroot. I've also made a bit of a fence 
just to support the broad beans a little because as they put the beans on they'll get very heavy and they will fall onto the onions so to stop that I don't mind them falling on the path but I don't want them on the onions now I am watching out for the black fly on these tops it's only a matter of time before they start coming and then I should just take the tops out as they get it and take them away and destroy them these are the Japanese overwintered onions and as you can see they're, they're as good as ready now we can start using them so we will pull a couple when we start harvesting today and take them up to the house these are the main crop onions they're doing very well they had a bit of a battering at the beginning from the pigeons landing in them and taking off but I think they're coming they're coming good enough now they'll be fine now we're inside the net cage we made for the peas and the beans and now we'll show you how they're progressing along. They've literally doubled in size now since we planted them. They're all latching on to the wire and the net and they're all really away now. These beans are cobra along here and as you can see they started to send the runners up now. The beans on this side are balotti beans. As you can see they're just beginning to send their runners up now so they will, they'll be up in no time. All the peas are the same this year, they're all aldermen and they are doing rather well. Now we're working our way nicely up the plot and now we'll go into the fruit cage and then we'll look at doing some harvesting while we're going past on this little bed behind the shed we have the clematis nelimosa and this is where we also grow some comfrey now we grow a patch of comfrey we don't grow it to process it to make tea or anything for the plants we grow it and leave it for the bees and then when it's finished flowering we put it into the compost bin. The cherries are coming, not such a heavy crop this year but we will have cherries. Now these are the two blueberry bushes, we keep them in this raised bed. As you can see there's quite a few on them this year. Every time I go to town, or the garden centres, we say, I pick up a bag of vericaceous compost and tip it in there. So it's taking quite a while, but we will fill that box with vericaceous eventually. The gooseberry bushes are doing very well this year. The far one is a red one. They're just beginning to colour a little bit. But we need some rain now to swell the berries. As you can see there's quite a few berries on them but they just need a little bit of rain now just to just to swell them up a little. These are the red currant. Not such a heavy crop as last year but I, if I remember right I did move some of the bushes so I don't really know which bushes are moved. I think these two were moved but that's a good show for a bush that was moved last year. This one I moved to this position, this is actually a black currant. That is a gooseberry that I moved. I don't expect much from them this season, but next year I do. But saying that it was moved and I don't take much from it, as you can see it is still trying to throw a berry or two. Now these are the new raspberries that we planted last year. As you can see they're they're earlies or summer raspberries and now they're just beginning to show fruit again a little bit of rain just to swell those berries would be nice we're not expecting a lot because the summer flowering months remember that the, as soon as these are finished fruiting we'll cut these off these ones that are coming up now we'll tie those in and these are next year's summer crop so we'll let these come in, there's quite a few coming up, we'll tie these in when we've cut those off when they're finished fruiting. Now these strawberries here are 
in fact all the strawberries we've got are all a new crop they're three years old this year so we can let them fruit this year if you remember last year we took all the fruit off to strengthen the plant we've got quite a bit of fruit coming we'll lift a few what are ready to show you that we are harvesting the other thing is i've got one or two runners coming off them so i'll show you in a moment that i've actually planted some of the runners into pots and then i'll keep those so they'll follow on and thicken up these strawberry beds so we get a really strong strawberry bed producing a lot of fruit these are some of the runners that i potted remember in three years they'll be producing as much as these so all the gaps and especially at the end i'll fill the rows up with them and so they're really cropping well then out to the whole bed now as you can see some of the strawberries are ready for picking just a little bit more on that one but we'll take some of them off just to lighten the load a bit and then bring the other ones on a bit over this side there's quite a few that are ready lot so we'll take them while we can and then the rest will think look that one's got a bit of mildew on it look so we'll take that one away as well now we've we've picked what few strawberries we've got and there's just enough there for us to have half eat on our bran plates tomorrow morning and i have tasted one and absolutely beautiful when we purchased the strawberry plants which would be two years ago now we bought earlies mids and late as you can see the late crop is still growing yet and just coming into flower the odd there are odd strawberries on it but they're not won't be ready for some time yet now this row here are the late raspberries the autumn raspberries as you can see this end is not doing very well and the strawberries over there are not doing very well at all now earlier on just as things were beginning to grow we had a really really bad mold problem in this fruit cage and this is the result of them burrowing underneath the roots loosening the roots they've just dried out and died likewise the strawberries as well when i press the soil down you can actually follow their runs all through the root system so hopefully they will pick up and start to grow again if not i shall replace them with some more autumn raspberries this year now these are the onions because we never seem to have enough onions and we keep giving some to Gemma so she actually bought some and sent them as so the set so we put these in these are what we call Gemma's onions now now we've got half brown half red for her the only place I could find to put them was in this case so really I could have done with some more fruit in there but we've got onions now now these here are the rest of the current bushes they were moved so they're not expecting much off them this year although they are doing rather well if you look you can see the way the berries are hanging on that one that's black currant if you look at this one that hasn't been moved you can see that the berries are on spurs now this is a white currant I like white currants the other two bushes there are gooseberries they haven't been moved they're doing very very well i think the far one is a red one in fact i, I know it's a red one now this is our thornless blackberry now we didn't buy it we didn't plant it it just arrived and it is a very very strong grow as you can see and it bears a massive amount of very large fruit i don't know what it's called or anything it, it just seemed to appear in the garden it's very strong canes here that are growing up these are next years so same as the early raspberries as soon as we've taken the fruit off we'll remove all the old growth and tie these in and grow them up ready for next year's crop but what a lot of flowers and you can see the fruits are beginning to form now 
it's actually been covered in bees this year it's been very very well it's done very very well but I say I don't know the name or anything about it it just appeared so the the only way that this could have arrived here is that a bird has brought the seed in and planted it for us now if come out the fruit case now and we're at the compost bins I have three small bins now and one very large bin that I'm making still working on that but I will finish it I've got a lid to put on it yet it's massive that one we use for the manure from the horses when it arrives because it comes in such a large amount that I need to fill it up into there these are just normal composting bins we use these three for kitchen and garden waste all the grass mowings and everything else I can get I put in what I do is when one of the bins are full I give it six weeks and then I move it to the next bin so it's continuously moving about every six or seven weeks and as I move it I mix some of the horse manure with it and barley straw and then keep it turned into the bins this is my main water station it collects rainwater off these roofs also there's a top up water system in it that I can just fill it up with fresh water if need be but the idea being that if I'm filling this with tap water I like to let it stand for 24 hours before I use it now we're made our way up to the shed area I have this area between the shed and the chicken hut where we grow the crazy grape I planted this white grape so we've got a red grape and a white grape up here but to grow this up I've had to build an extension to the frame and I've just got two more cross pieces to put in and then the support wires and then the white grape can come onto this area here and it will finish up like the crazy grape which is nearly ready now for its first trim all this new growth will want trimming back so that the strength goes into producing grapes not not foliage so that's another job that's on the list to go up there and prune it all back but it makes good compost right so we'll pick those strawberries up and we'll do a little bit harvesting some lettuce etc that we've seen I'm just going to cut these two little gems off for harvest there's one Yes, there you are then, two little gems and I can show you Gemma's coming tomorrow so she'll take one of these home with her or maybe both, I'll have to come and get some more Now, although I've just cut the roots off when I come down to water it tomorrow I shall actually dig those roots up and take them away I don't want to leave old roots in there rotting else we start to get all sorts of funguses growing a few onions here I'm just going to put the knife under them and loosen them a bit because they might if you pull them in this hard ground you just break the tops off so we'll take this full run and see what we got see they're quite quite firm in then we'll give them a wash and show you I want the soil behind, I don't want that soil away. There you go. So there's two more little clumps to lift. That's one. Then this one as well. Not so many on this one, but we'll take it anyway. Take that weed out while I'm here. There they are, look. Now, when you wash them, under the tap, these will all separate and they'll all come apart then. 
I'm just going to pick these few radish now. I'll take the bigger ones out and let the other ones bulk up. The others won't be long now. Here are there's a few radish there. It's just enough there and at that size, that's the best size to get them. Right, I'm just going to pull out a couple of these overwintered onions so we could start using them because we've actually run out of onions now. So I'll take this one. They don't take much lift in these. Need the soil behind if you can. There you are, it's a nice looking onion that is. And these, I find these over winter ones are not quite as strong and they go beautifully on salads. There you go, there's the other one. Look. Come out easy. Roots will break it off easy on these. As I say, we just leave the soil behind. We don't want to take that up and wash it. So we'll take those, skin them back a bit, give them a wash. Right, this is our little harvest this week. We got two of those lovely overwintered onions, two little gem lettuce, and they are very firm. Some lovely spring onion, some radish, they're actually called sparkler, a few new potatoes, that's good for this time of year for us, and a little handful of strawberries. Now that'll be it for this week, we've given you a little tour of the garden, I hope you've enjoyed it, we've shown you what we've got, that was the easy bit, now the hard bit is to grow it and then harvest it and then store it away ready for winter use and late summer use. So thank you for watching and coming on our tour with us. Many many thanks for subscribing, we do appreciate it. Now hopefully we'll see you again next week. Bye now.